Today's medication is called nalbethine hydrochloride, and it's also known by its brand name, which is Nubane. It falls under the class of synthetic opioid agonists and synthetic opioid antagonists. Its mechanism of action is that it antagonizes and agonizes opioid receptors. It disrupts the traditional pain pathways. It decreases pain perception and produces analgesia. Your indications are going to be moderate to severe pain and chest pain associated with an acute MI. I would be shocked if if any ambulance actually carried this in the USA. The most common place that you'll probably see it is in the OR for sedation purposes, pain control purposes, and possibly in labor and delivery, but it's just not something we see pre-hospital. And with that being said, as always, before we get into dosages, make sure that you're abiding by your local protocol and staying within your scope of practice. The dose for Nubane is going to be 2 to 5 milligrams slow IV or IO push, and it is not recommended for pediatrics. Your contraindications are going to be head injuries, hypovolemia, hypotension, and undiagnosed abdominal pain. Adverse reactions can include nausea and vomiting, hypotension, altered mental status, syncope, bradycardia, central nervous system depression, and sedation. And going into your drug interactions, nalbuffine can and will interact with other benzodiazepines, other narcotics, other sedatives, hypnotics, even alcohol by increasing the already present central nervous system depression. How it's applied typically in a 10 or 20 milligram vial. And just a few side notes about Nubane. Just like I mentioned earlier, it's not usually a medication that you'll see in the pre-hospital setting, but it can be used and seen in the hospital itself. I just want to reiterate that. And the onset is two to three minutes. It does not have a huge effect on blood pressure like a lot of our narcotics do. And that could be because of the dual antagonizing and agonizing effects. Used with caution in patients that have impaired respiratory function and be aware that narcotics are highly addictive. Like I said, you won't usually see this in, on an ambulance, but if you do start noticing that certain patients are requesting narcotics that you do carry on your ambulance, this is something that you should always report to your supervisor because narcotics are very addictive and it's a huge issue in the United States, everywhere actually. With that being said, remember to abide by your local protocol and stay within your scope of practice. This video is purely informational for those in the EMS field, never meant to be used in the place of medical direction, local protocol, or formal education. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.